Oh, that's a boring one. That's super fucking boring. What sports do you like to watch? That doesn't apply to me. What's your favorite way to waste time? Jerking off, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't even things that need to be discussed. These are just no brainer. What do you like to do in your spare time? That's the same question. Jerking off. What does your own personal hell look like? How about your own personal heaven? Okay, so with that being said, welcome back to the, the third episode of Break Room Nachos. I didn't tell Mike we were recording. Oh, nice. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I was actually thinking about this recently because I, 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 I was talking about this with a coworker today. I do have an idea of what my own personal hell is. Okay. Um, I'm not a big believer in like anything superstitious as we went over in the last episode. Right. I don't believe I, or I, I, I don't, I don't specifically believe in any gods. I'm not really a religious guy. Uh, I don't believe in life after death. I fully believe like, consciousness and like our thoughts on ourselves are caused by natural biological processes and once those cease we cease there's nothing there's not even like the the recognition of nothingness there's just nothing fair enough you stop thinking but my coworker suggested recently that like what if death was just you're in blackness and you're conscious but you there you can't do anything you it's, don't know of anything going on it's just black forever black forever and you're just completely bored and i think that would be my personal hell and the reason I say that is because last night I couldn't fall asleep. And that's basically what being restless uh, uh, for sleeping is. You're just sitting there with like your eyes shut in the darkness and you want to be like dead or asleep or anything, but you're just stuck sitting there. Right. Excuse me. And I mean, in that scenario too, you don't even, you can't even like look over at the clock and at least be like, I wish I was sleeping, but I've got to get up in two hours. You're just stuck there for, for all of eternity. Yeah. Like at some point you would lapse your own lifespan and then you'd lapse your, your lifespan 10 times it. Like at, at some point you would have spent more time in darkness than you would have being alive. And you might not even be aware of it. Cause like you said, you can't look at a clock that that would be horrible. That would be horrible. That'd be terrible. Can you imagine if like you had, you know, 80 years to be conscious and to have life. And then the rest of it was nothing stretching on into infinity. Oh, uh, wow. No, thanks. No, no. And you know, I've never thought about that, but I, I would agree with you that that's that, probably the worst personal. That's health, probably like, the worst, but I, I will, I will add to that my own personal. If I was in that situation, but also did not have a pair of socks on, <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be <laughs> that would quite honestly be my own personal hell. You're not even aware of your own feet, but you're like, there's no fucking socks, dude. What the hell am I gonna do? Right? My feet are out. They might not exist, but they're out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that that's my personal hell right there. Oh god. Um speaking of infinity, um, I've been getting into a lot of like space related content recently okay like listening to like okay so I, I i spend a lot of time at work by myself and i spend a lot of time with headphones on listening to music mm -hmm. sometimes i get sick of music so i find like stuff to listen to on youtube like podcasts or whatever right so there's this there's this guy on youtube who makes videos about space that i've been getting way into so i've dude i'm basically an astrophysicist at this point is it neil degrasse tyson it is not okay he's called his his channel's called c i fucking forget what that stands for but it's like space is what the S stands for. And I don't remember what the other two stand for. Okay. <laughs> but, um, I've learned a ton about space and you, you don't want to know, you want to know what I've learned. What have you learned? Our solar system is the beta male of the universe. Okay. Like the most we have going for us is that we have life on earth. And like, considering how large the universe is, we're more than likely, like way more likely than, th than we are the only ones with life. We are way more likely to be the ones that to be one of many. Right. Right. But like our sun is small in the, in, in, in comparison to the rest of the universe, our planet is small. Our biggest planet, Jupiter is small compared to other planets. Okay. Right. Um, you know how Saturn has rings? I do. That's pretty cool, right? Absolutely. There's a planet within the Milky Way galaxy. I believe it's in the Milky Way galaxy. It might be the next galaxy over, but I'm pretty sure we can't see very well into that yet. So I'm fairly certain it's our own galaxy. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of this planet. Um, it is twice the size of Jupiter. It's a gas giant. Okay. It has rings like Saturn, but <laughs> here's the thing. The, the amount of rings it has is fucking ridiculous. 
<laughs> like if you ma- if you imagine like um, now, how ridiculous are we talking? I'm trying to come up with a good analogy for this. If you imagine like a a dartboard. Okay. You know, you know where you have like the bullseye at the center. Sure. Imagine that is the planet, and then the entire outside <laughs> of the ring stretches out like two hundred <laughs> times the size of the bull- bullseye. That's the fucking volume of rings we're talking about. So it's it looks like a little disc with like it a, looks like a disc with like a sky. dot in the middle. There's so many rings on it that it obscures the stars that that planet uh, orbits around. Oh, that wow. is how large the the number of rings it is. It's fucking insane. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, there's got to be something else out there. There's, oh my God, there's so much ridiculous shit like that. And like, we're so, so ridiculously tiny compared to everything. Yeah. Like, okay, so uh, 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 a light year is not actually a, a, a measurement of time, if you're, Cor- which, which most people should know at this point. Correct. It's it's a measure of the distance that it take the distance that it takes for light to travel in one year. Right. It's it's more of speed than time. Yeah. Well, it's distance. It's it's the distance at which light will travel in a year. Right. But you could also travel at the speed of light. Theoretically, well, so, well, actually, a, well, a light year, a light year is a distance. But if we could travel at the speed of light, that's how far you travel in a year. Correct. Earth is. Eight minutes away from the sun in terms of light speed. Okay. The next closest, uh, uh, I believe it's the next closest star is 50 light years away. Wow. Yeah. Like that's, that's how ridiculously small we are. Like how, how ridiculously small the distance between us and the sun is on a, on a, on a global scale. That's just the next closest star. Right. The next closest uh, 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 galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy is something like, 15 million light years away. Yeah. And that's the closest galaxy of many millions and billions. Yeah. There is so fucking much to space and it's fascinating, but it also just makes you feel like life is pointless. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I can for sure see that. Um, yeah. Space is really interesting. Just like I've been having a fucking blast learning about it. Like there's just so much interesting shit between not knowing what's out there and like what's theoretically out there. Right. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the, the earth example of like Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Like people think it exists, but there, there, there's some areas out there on out there on earth that he could just be hiding in the Everglades and <laughs> we never find him. That's true. No, it's, 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 that's actually a great analogy too, because like there's a lot of the universe that we can't actually see. So I, I, I'm going to botch the science behind this, but um, space is constantly expanding, mm-hmm. but it isn't expanding in like the sense of like a circle expanding. It's like every point in space is growing slightly. So if you imagine like, you know, there's something there's a, there's like one centimeter. This is obviously an over overblown example. Yeah. But there's like a centimeter a centimeter between one object and another. And then that, that centimeter grows to two. And then that those centimeters grow to two each. So there are four. And then those centimeters grow to eight and it's just like a constant exponential growth. Yeah. So every like object in space for the most part is growing further apart at an exponential rate. And so because of this, the theory is, and this is fairly well accepted, but obviously not proven because there'd be basically no way to prove it. It's fairly well expected that there's actually like a ridiculously huge chunk of the universe that we legitimately cannot see because like, our galaxy and another galaxy are moving apart from each other, each at about half the speed of light. So that means that light traveling from that galaxy would never reach us because it couldn't travel fast enough to beat that acceleration. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, huh. so like, obviously we have no way of knowing for sure, but th- there's like theories out there that like what we can see in the universe is only like, one ninety millionth of the actual universe, right? And we'll never know because we just legitimately can never see that far. Yeah, space is crazy, man. It is. But you know what else is crazy? Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, uh, apparently you have something you want to talk about here. <laughs> no, I really, I really do. I do like the like the the topic of Bigfoot and just the concept of whether or not. Bigfoot could be real and living in like a fairly small area. And the amount and we've somehow just never seen him. Right. Or never we, seen them. 
right. maybe Pre- presumably if a them yeah i mean if you've ever watched like um I don't know if they're even on anymore, but it was like like Bigfoot hunters or like Sasquatch hunter. Was it catching Bigfoot was one of them? I think that was one. That was kind of a big one, I think. Yeah. And like the guy tried baiting him with like like donuts and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like uh, what some trailer park boys would think would catch Sasquatch. Like donuts is the best thing in the world. If he ain't coming out for this, he must not exist. What I love, they would just they would like hang out in the woods <laughs> at night. And they'd be like, like listening and you'd hear just, you know, whatever, a random noise of like an animal, like breaking a branch. Who's that Bigfoot? Who's that? Are you out there? I know you was out there. You been spying on my grandma. (laughs) And you, you just hear him go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was that? That, that sounded like a wood knock. And then they'd like, (laughs) they'd cut away and explain to you that, that, the Sasquatch is known for trying to scare people away by taking a log and banging it against a tree. <laughs> At that point, it just sounds like Bigfoot playing pranks on people. Well, it, it's like those messing with Sasquatch commercials for like oh, Jack. Fuck, those are I, that's that's some that's some nostalgia right there. And that's pretty much what these guys made it sound like. Um, that's so goofy. They would listen. They'd be like, "It wasn't a very it wasn't a very loud knock." It sounds like it, like an adolescent male Sasquatch. <laughs> they have like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh god. So they're they're just basing this fully off their theories, and oh yeah, and there's there's a thing that exists um, called the BFRO, the Bigfoot Research Organization. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure they have a podcast. Maybe we can get one of those one of those dudes on here at some point. Oh hell yeah, I'd love to have them as a guest. But yeah, first I'm, question. What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, there's not a lot of solid evidence. Um, there's like that one. Um, there's that one picture. Yeah, it's like the. That's like the main thing. I believe it's the the Patterson Gimlet footage. Yeah, it's something like that, and it's it's that that one photo that you always see where he's kind of like like lumbering past. Yeah, yeah walking with like his arms swinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I've seen the I've seen like the 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 moving portion of it. Did you were you ever like? afraid of of sasquatch or bigfoot um i was not um and by the way it's patterson gimlin you got really close like i would have never known that the patterson gimlin film okay (laughs) yeah um those guys are just legendary pranksters as far as i'm concerned they probably are they're just trolling all of us oh yeah they were like og trollers they were the original social experimenters (laughs) When I, one time when I was a kid, my grandparents had this amazing cottage in Wisconsin. Um, I have, what what part of Wisconsin? I don't, they're kind of like, I'd say they're about an hour away from Madison. Okay. I know a guy from Oshkosh, like the, like the kids clothing company. (laughs) They live, uh, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they live on a lake. This cottage, I have such vivid memories of this place. It's like the most beautiful house ever. If like, if I could own it after my parent, after my grandparents are gone, I would. Cause I just, I love this building. Yeah. Um, I have such amazing memories of this place. Like I, uh, I, I could go over an entire na- nostalgia trip over it. But one time when I was at that, that house, I saw like a, a mockumentary, not, well, I guess technically it'd be a documentary because people filming it thought it was real, but like they, they like were talking about the facts of Bigfoot and like what they know about it and like where it could potentially reside. And they had like, uh, 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 stories from like old farmers who like saw Bigfoot. Like, oh yeah, somebody always sees choking it. his chicken. The farmer's chicken. <laughs> the farmer's like animal chicken. <laughs> Got, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, just so we're all, just so everyone, everyone's on the same page. Everyone's clear. That was not innuendo. That's like he was attacking some cocks. <laughs> Bigfoot was going down on them cocks. That's why. That's what we're talking about here. So anyway, I went to bed that night and I was fucking terrified that Bigfoot was going to climb through the window. Oh, yeah. And like the thing, I don't know how old I was. I, I must have been, I don't know, 12, 11, something like that. Kind of younger. But like the thing was, I was sitting there laying in, in, in the bed and I like using the logical part of my brain to be like, they said in the documentary, he probably hangs out in like 
tropical kind of like, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Humid areas. And I was in Wisconsin in like fall. So not really his domain. Right. But I was still fucking scared shitless. I couldn't sleep that night. There was like this, like, so the, the room that I stayed in that, 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 that time there, it's like a big room and there's like a bed along one of the walls and they just have these giant windows that you can, Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. It's fine. Cause you said, excuse me. Um, there was just these giant glass panes. So like my thought process was if Bigfoot really wanted to, he could absolutely fit through those slots. Oh, like there was, sure. there was, there was no doubt he could fit through that. And I was just scared shitless. I don't know why Bigfoot would be coming for me specifically or why he would climb up onto the second story of a cottage in the middle of Wisconsin on a lake in an area that he shouldn't be. But I was fucking scared. Yeah. The, the one interesting thing about the whole Bigfoot Sasquatch, whatever you want to call him. Um, all these shows about trying to find him. It is a little odd that in different parts of the world, almost every country has a story about like a different version. Yeah. A different version of like a cryptozoological creature that they're fascinating to hear about. And like, I want to believe that there's some like realm of reality they could exist in. Cause some of them are like so spooky that it's like, I just want to like shake his hand and then probably die immediately. But yeah. Oh man. Great. Like fucking Mothman. What the hell? I want to meet Mothman. I want to have a beer with Mothman. I don't even drink and I'd, I'd share a beer with Mothman. Why not? <laughs> um, I mean, you could have one of your, one of your non-alcoholics if you want. I still fucking have one. I, okay. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, I've already said it a couple of times. I don't drink, but when I turned 21, I did a meme on my live stream where I bought a pack of non-alcoholic beers and I took a Sharpie and I crossed out the non part and I held it up to the camera and I was like, check it out guys. I'm, it's my 21st birthday. I'm drinking an alcoholic beer. And so I, I had to buy a six pack. You can't buy them in singles or at least not where I was. And so I, I kind of have just been slowly drinking them as, as jokes on live streams. Mostly when I do 24 hour live streams, I will find a, a time to, to drink one usually later in the night. Cause it's so disgusting and like I'll, I'll chug it and it just wakes me up. So the, for the past, past like three live streams, I've been like, I'm going to finish off this last one and I keep fucking forgetting. I forgot on the last one too. I still have it. Oh, I've had that for almost two years now. And, and you, you even gave me one of the six pack. So that's that I, right. I did <laughs> so that I could try it and log it on my, my app to have another beer. So I think I had, I had one on my 21st birthday, maybe a second as well. I gave one to you and then I drank the other two on 24 hour live streams. I'm pretty sure the one that's left that just leaves the one left. Okay. But God damn it. I just need to like off the big, at the top of a live stream, just get rid of that fucker. Cause you, I'm not going to think about it. You apparently. need to, you need to, do it. You need to do a chug video, not a video, but on your stream, you need to just down that whole thing at once. Well, I did do, I did chug them on the last, the other two 24 hour live streams. It's, it's been, it's been a long time since I saw it. I couldn't really remember if you chugged it or not. I did. I, I got like really bad brain freeze from one of them. Cause it was super cold. Gotcha. It fucking sucked. Cause it was also just really gross. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't really a fan. I'm not a fan. Like I, I, I just do not like the taste of alcohol. I can't do it. Like the, we, like the ones that you've had me try, there's been what, like two that I like sort of like that you were like, that's okay. Yeah. There was, there's been none that I was like, Oh yeah, I can ruin my life to this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so this was probably, I would say 2015, maybe. It was right after right after I got uh, promoted to be be a supervisor when we were at World Market. Okay. Um, uh, one of one of the other stores in the area was doing a remodel and they needed people to to go help. Yep. And so they put me up in, in a hotel for a week while we were doing doing this remodel. I this is starting to sound familiar, but keep going. Okay. So there was this guy there. He was from, he was from one of, one of the Ohio stores. So, I mean, already one of those people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but at some point it got brought up how he was obsessed with 
Sasquatch. Okay. Like, like hardcore into it, like going out in the woods with some donuts kind of guy. I couldn't tell if he was like real serious, but he made enough jokes about it that I feel like he was kind of trying to play off his seriousness with jokes. Okay. But he did. He did say exactly what he would do if he encountered. Oh, God, he had a plan. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, was this like a plan to capture it or a plan to like fend it off? No, no. So actually neither. It's okay. His plan was really just so that the world knew would know that that Sasquatch existed. (laughs) Okay. So like possibly like risk his life just to get the info out there. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So he said he didn't. he, He said he wouldn't be afraid. He didn't even care if Sasquatch killed him. He, he, he's a fucking martyr. A martyr for cryptology. Yeah, cri- crypto, cryptozoology, I believe, is the, is the technical term for animals that are... Cryptozoology. You're right. Cryptology is an actual thing. Yeah. But yeah, cryptozoology. I think it's great. Um, no, but he said, he said when he encountered Sasquatch, he would, he would look him in the eyes... And dead serious, he looked at all of us and goes, I would say, I got you, you dumb son of a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) You don't. Okay, that's so you don't have time for that. You got to get the picture, dog. Hold hold on. No, no. no. Okay, there's more. Bro thought this out a little little bit. Okay, he's okay. His idea was that he would then charge Sasquatch. And is he going for like the like bear attack mentality? Like if you use enough confidence, you can scare it. Well, I, I'm I'm getting there. So I'm sorry. I'm just I'm I'm a questioning motherfucker. I'm I know, interested. I know you are. I'm enthralled. Well, I'm good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're you're enjoying the story. Hopefully, somebody else is. Um, so he said he would charge Sasquatch and then proceed to scratch him as, <laughs> as much as possible, and said. I don't even care if that, that thing kills me because I'm going to I'm going to have that Sasquatch DNA underneath my fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> so his plan isn't to get a picture of it. His plan is to get Sasquatch DNA that a an investigator will know to analyze and be like, that's a fucking Sasquatch right yep. there. Yep. That's a fucking dumb idea. <laughs> But the guy thought it out. He had a plan. That doesn't make sense. If so, if an investigator found that and like they would analyze it for human DNA and and it would it would probably come up as an error in the system and they would call it a day at that. They wouldn't investigate it further. He, he his plan should have been have a smartphone and take a picture. Right. Although I guess we've seen that pictures aren't exactly proof, but correct. But if you got some Sasquatch DNA, like just the world will know, right? The world shall know the world's secrets. But I think my favorite part of that is he had his direct quote planned out. The I got you, you dumb son of a bitch. That is pretty funny. I, I love that he would come up with something to say to a creature that likely does not understand human speech. Right. Even even like animals that spend a lot of time around us really can not understand human speech. Like Luna knows her name but she does not know what it means when I call her a dumb idiot. Otherwise she'd be much more offended because I call her a dumb idiot all the time. Oh, poor Luna. She's a dumb idiot. You saw her when I picked her up earlier. She can't even figure out how to deal with that. She would die if you didn't have me. She has no survival instincts. Yeah. When I pick up Luna for, for everybody's everybody's reference and I hold her in the air, which she doesn't like, she doesn't do anything about it. She might kick her leg a little bit, but she never has the thought of like, I should scratch to get out of this. She just kind of like, doesn't know what to do about it. Yeah. We collectively have, have some, some goofy animals. Oh yeah. I feel like we should save your dog for just an entire podcast. Yeah. That kind of needs to be its own thing. You I, could, you could tease a little bit right now though, for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a dog that that's pretty goofy and much like, much like your cat Luna, no uh, survival instincts, no survival instincts whatsoever um if there's snow outside and it's we'll say under like 20 degrees it's got to be got to be pretty cold yeah but if she's out there more than five minutes her her paws start to freeze and she doesn't do anything about she'll, it she'll just pick that paw up off the ground <laughs> and start kind of like like kicking it backwards to try to like get rid of the coldness <laughs> but then that doesn't work 
and sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm waiting for her to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So like, I kind of have to like deal with it. So I'll like, I'll like pick her up and try and like, like warm up her paw with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then like another one of her paws will get cold. And so she'll switch. Oh man. And the there, whole time she's not going to the bathroom, not going to the bathroom. There have been a couple times where she has literally just given up and just laid down in the snow. <laughs> I was like, you, you would seriously survive like 15 minutes in the wild. Oh my God. That, that's the best case. Lil, Lily, you're great. I love you, but domesticated animals are just worthless in the, in the wild. You can't just release them. No, that's not going to work out. No. Or she'd eat something she, she shouldn't. And just, that would just be the end of her. Luna's too fucking friendly. She'd like walk up right, right up to a fox and be like, Hey, what's up, dude? Oh, you're killing me. That's cool. Well, Lily's the same way. Yeah, totally. Um, has Luna ever been around a dog? Uh, uh, yeah, my parents' dog, Sammy, when he, when my parents have come over to my place. Okay. How did Luna do with that? Uh, I mean, she didn't really, she didn't really care about him. She was pretty like steadfast, but didn't, she wasn't like friendly towards him. Cause my, my, my parents' dog is pretty rambunctious and cats don't like that kind of thing. So. I gotcha. I, I'm just kind of curious if, if Luna and Lily would would get along with each other. I really don't know. I think, I think Luna would just avoid Lily because Lily's also pretty rambunctious. She is pretty rambunctious, but she is incredibly friendly. And, yeah. And any cat she has ever like encountered, it's always been on a leash, but she really just treats it like it's a tiny dog. Oh. So I think Lily would be fine with Luna. I don't know. I don't know that Luna would appreciate Lily. So I don't much. know either probably find out at some point if we do that overnight podcast or something oh that would be great overnight with the pets remember everybody 100k subscribers we'll do we'll do the sleepover podcast yeah i mean i might be willing to do it at like 100 subscribers nah fuck that i got we gotta give people an incentive all right fine we can't just be like hey you can stop sharing us at 100 Uh, okay basically my point is i just (laughs) i really just want to do a sleepover (laughs) (laughs) You just want to recapture that magic, man. I know. Well, who doesn't? No, you're right. That's true. You know what else? Like, just kind of looping back to the, the cryptids thing. Yeah. Um, I crypt. It wasn't really cryptids that were an issue for me. But when I would go camping in Boy Scouts, if I I had to like actively avoid the thought of there being an animal out in the woods, otherwise I'd just be scared shitless. Yeah, I I I, I was such a little bitch about it when I was a kid, like going from my tent to the bathroom late at night. Like if I, if I considered the possibility, like if I heard a sound and considered the possibility that there might be a wolf, that'd be an extra two hours before I'd go back to sleep. Oh yeah. I can see that. Um, or like sometimes when I worked at this subsided, the longer I worked at my summer camp, because obviously like the, 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 the camp kind of became like my home. And it was like, I know every inch of this place. I'm not fucking worried about it. Yeah. But when I first started working there, definitely like if I heard like a, a wild screech of an 11 year old out in the woods, like <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my, my brain wouldn't connect the dots. And so I'd be like, what the fuck was that? I'm not going to sleep tonight, baby. Something's out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would get the same way. Um, I, I've talked before about how I would do like, backyard camping sleepovers we didn't really go over that we talked about whether or not it could be a sleepover but you didn't really talk about your experiences with it okay um i mean basically like a regular sleepover we just hang outside in a tent but the relevance to that is you know like i said i grew up in a house that was surrounded by woods yeah a lot of animals a lot of random noises at night um so yeah you'd hear like just crazy shit and be like I don't know. That's something that's going to kill me. Oh yeah, dude. It was the worst. I mean, I love camping. I haven't gone camping in forever and I miss it like crazy, but definitely there were some times when it just was the worst. This, this is going to sound weird. Um, I feel like I kind of enjoy adversity to an extent when it comes to camping. Yeah, I can see that because it kind of, it sucks in the moment, but when you look back on it, the struggle almost feels fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I do have specifics for that too. Um, a lot of times it was like storm related stuff that I like it's, it sucks in the moment, but it's a lot of fun in retrospect. Uh, I remember one camp out in particular. Uh, it was, 
it must have been springtime, but there was just like a terrible storm coming to hit us. And like, you know, we're out in the woods. There's not really a whole lot you can do about that. Maybe, you know, some adults, some of those hover parents might be like the kind that are like, we got to pack up and get the fuck out of here. But, you know, this was Boy Scouts. So you had like classic rough and tumble dads who were like, no, we're going we're going to survive this. Right. I mean, it, you boys got to learn. That was that. It, that's kind of like the whole point of the Boy Scouts. Certainly. Unfortunately, that kind of mindset is dying slowly because of those hover parents. But right. Um, you know, slowly making that kind of thing illegal. But um, and I'm sure there are guidelines within the Boy Scouts at this point that are like, if a storm gets this bad, you have to leave. Yeah. But it was like a really bad storm coming. And like to the point where it was like. The there was a certain time that we all had to be in our tents and you were not allowed to leave your tents for the rest of the night. Cause it was like, it's going to be storming at this time. It is not safe. You have to stay inside your tent. Here's the problem with that. Um, I was not a very good boy scout. Okay. <laughs> and my friends, uh, a lot of my friends were not either. And my, my troop didn't have a good system for like making sure that your tent was built correctly. What? <laughs> real, real quick, I've got to interrupt. Was Jake a Boy Scout? No, no, no. Okay, I, I can't picture him being a Boy Scout. I can picture him being a horrible Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine Jake getting into some pretty chaotic situations as yeah. a Boy Scout. But no, like my friend Matt, who um, him and I aren't uh, don't really like talk that much anymore. We talk every once in a while. Um, I don't really know what he's up to anymore. But we were like really close friends when we were younger, and so on all of our Boy Scout campouts, we would tent up together. We fucking we kind of sucked at building tents, and no one would like go around and double check. The main thing that we frequently forgot to do was probably the main, most important part, which was making sure your fucking tent was staked down. Oh gosh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> so, what kind of Boy Scout were you? A bad one. I already said that. All right, all right, fine. Listen, when I worked at a summer camp for four years, I was the technology director. Even at a summer camp. I found a way to stay inside most of the time. Yeah. That's the kind of Boy Scout we're talking about. Okay. So, yeah, in the middle of this fucking storm, crazy storm with crazy wind, our tent was not staked down properly. And it fucking flipped multiple times. We were on the roof. We were on the wall. We were not on the floor anymore. Wait, while you were in the tent? While we were in the tent. That's the kind of winds we're talking about. No, the, stop yes, it. Yes, the kind of winds to toss two 12-year-olds over onto their side really yeah it was fucking intense and intense in the tent <laughs> intense, intense. <laughs> um well i like that we got to bring that joke in a second time that okay so our, our our co-worker who we talked about last time we talked about camping um i know for a fact he watched the podcast so i really hope he's listening to this podcast i know because he, he he he's very much judging me for this yeah he's very much judging you for this but he is also um, he is a huge fan of uh Bigfoot research. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I guess so he, I feel like I have heard him talk about this. He before. will definitely make sure to listen to this podcast. Jeff, I I know, I know, I know, I know now as an adult, but it, I, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't, and you know what? It's really on the adults who didn't check that my tent was staked down. Yeah, but, you cannot trust 12 year olds. But also, to be fair, if the winds were strong enough that they blew two 12 year olds over, I don't know that the stakes would have even helped all that much oh they absolutely would have those things get nailed into the ground like six inches yeah that's true those that's just, that's a powerful wind to toss toss a couple of young young lads i mean it's not like you know we 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 went flying up into the air like fucking willy wonka's anti-gravity machine it was more like you know the floor started to come the, up the and glass kind of elevator us over yeah right it, it, it was more like, you know, the floor started to come up and kind of ruled us over. It wasn't like we got tossed around, but definitely like the kind of win where it was like, we have no control over this. All right. So, you know, looking at that in retrospect, it was fucking awesome. But at the moment, I definitely was like, I really want to be home right now. Yeah. It's, yeah, for it's, sure. It's just like moments like that where it's like at the time it was an adversity, but looking back on it, it's like, it's kind of, I, I kind of wish I could, you know, experience that again and just go through that again. Cause that guy was kind of interesting. Right. Like, I feel like there's a lot of things like that, not necessarily adversity, but just stuff where you're like, this sucks right now. Like, if I knew I could survive this, it would be kind of kind of cool to do. I think like as I've gotten older and especially being a content creator like myself, like I've been making videos since I was 18 and I'm 22 now. Um, well, we all know you're 22 now. 
Well, I'm, I haven't exactly been trying to hide it. I that, figured if they w- weren't interested in the first episode, they aren't interested now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, a, a big thing for me is like, uh, as an adult, is like not only, mostly because of like my experiences with retail, have I gotten to the point where it's like bad things don't bother me. I don't really get stressed out anymore. I feel like I've conquered stress. I don't get stressed out ever anymore. Um, but it, it's like I, I, I can maintain a level head in like shitty situations. And like a big part of it for me is like, no matter how bad it gets, I always have the thought of like, well, at least I'll get a story out of this. Yeah. And, and that's he- enough for me because I like, you know, to be able to recount that. Right. Or I like to be able to look back on it, you know? Right. It's, it's great to have stories. Um, like, you know, when we had that, that summer at World Market where we were understaffed and without GM. Right. It sucked. But looking back on it, it was kind of fun. It was so much fun. That was actually kind of a blast. Because, I mean, part of it, too, we had no one telling us what to do, really. Mm-hmm. Um, or, like, when we had to uh, redo the gourmet section and, and like, I... I Thought I had developed kidney stones. Oh, that was such an awful night. That sucked. But like looking back on it, it was pretty fun. Yeah. And like the night we all got sick from eating too much pulled pork pizza. Right. That sucked. That really sucked. But that pizza was so good. That pizza was delicious for, I should probably like, we should probably explain this story a little bit. Yeah. Um, a couple years ago, they had this big, like our, the gourmet section of the store we worked at was on these racks that were all bolted to the floor. So they decided to do like a company wide move around of everything in that section. And so for stores like ours that had those bolted down shelves, it was like a multiple overnights uh, kind of renovation situation where everything had to be moved off the shelves onto temporary shelves. And they had to be unbolted, moved to a new spot, rebolted, reshelved. Everything had to be put, put back on. Yeah, it was a huge project. So it was like six overnights in a row that we were working on this. And like most of the nights were fine. Uh, most of the nights were a lot of fun. Like, you know, I prefer overnights, especially like I hate to dealing with customers. I always have my current job. I hardly ever see customers and I fucking love it. But at that job, like any, any chance to get away from customers was awesome. Yeah. So we could talk about whatever we wanted. We could listen to music, listen to music. Um, you, you know, just, you just have a great time. Yeah. You didn't have to watch what you said. It was great. You could just work and pass the time and it you was could great. wear whatever you want to work. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we worked with a girl who would wear pajamas to work <laughs> on, on stock nights. Brie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about the, the pajama thing. Yeah. Um, so most of the nights were really fun because it was just like we were either moving stuff around or we were like reshel- reshelving or putting stuff back on the shelves. But there was one night in particular that fucking sucked. And we thought it was going to be good because we had to put out signs for all of the stuff that was going back on the shelves. Literally every, every single item in the gourmet food department needed a little tiny sign put into a, like a, a tight little plastic thing. Yep. And I, I thought going in, it would be fine. Like it'd just be like, okay, you're just putting signs out all night. We'll just fucking listen to music and do this. But it was so fucking monotonous and boring that we just all got so sick of it. Yeah. To the point where like I had a rolling chair from our dining furniture department and I was rolling around the store in it, putting the signs out. Cause I was like, I don't want to stand here and put these goddamn signs out. And so that, that night during those overnights, we were allowed to like use money from the safe to like get food. So we, 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 we worked in the same like building complex as a cottage inn. And which is a pizza place, which is a pizza place. Sorry. I know that's a Midwest thing or maybe Michigan. Specific. I think it's just Michigan, but I think it's just, they have, they have great pizza. They do. Um, and shout out to cottage Inn. we're not sponsored. Please sponsor us. I'd love to be sponsored by cottage Inn. you can be the pizza in our sleepover podcast. The official, you could be the official pizza of break room nachos. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But, um, so we went to cottage Inn before they, they closed and we like went and picked up a pizza and we had this pizza we like to get. It's a pulled pork pizza which is as awesome as it sounds. Yep. It was fucking delicious. And we ordered it with extra pulled pork, extra pulled pork. Yep. And I believe everything crust, which is fantastic. Yeah. And not super relevant to what you're saying, but that's how we ordered it. And it was great. So there was three of us working the overnight and I believe we got like an extra large, extra pulled pork pizza. Yes. And we went over to Cottage Inn and the guy at the counter, the people in the Cottage Inn like knew all of us. Yeah, because we had done this 
like several days in a row. Not even that. Like just like every time we did overnights, we would always do Cottage Inn. Well, yeah. And like occasionally Taco Bell, but like mostly Cottage Inn. And and like some of us would go over and get like a personal pizza for lunch. Yeah. Um. Until they like sealed off the corridor and you had to go all the way around the building. And that was just way too much fucking effort. Yeah. Um. But. So the guy behind the counter is one of the guys who knew us and he hands us the pizza. <laughs> and he goes, you sure you boys can handle all that pork? <laughs> Which is just the most absurd thing to say. <laughs> just such a goofy thing to say to begin with. Was uh was that the guy that vaguely looked like Eric Andre? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I you know you never said that to me while we like saw him, but retrospectively I can say, yeah, he did he was like a thick Eric Andre. Yeah. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um so of course we super confidently like we're we're just like Full of piss and vinegar. We're like, hell yeah, we can handle all that pork, baby. What do you mean? Can we handle all that pork? Obviously, we can handle all that pork. And we ate the pizza. We all ate like three slices of this extra large, extra pulled pork pizza. And like an hour later, we could not handle that pork. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come to find out we could not, in fact, handle all that pork. Not at all. We felt fucking disgusting. Yeah. It was awful. And so... You know, we're already having this night where we're hating what we have to do because it's just this monotonous, boring, putting signs out there. Yep. And now all of us feel like shit because we ate too much pulled pork. Yeah. So and to, just so we're clear, it was there was nothing actually wrong with the pizza. No, the pizza was fucking delicious. We yeah. just ate too much of it yeah, because it was, it was so delicious. Yeah, it wasn't like a food poisoning situation. <laughs> nothing like that. Nope. Um, no, felt fine the next morning. Yep. Yeah. Nothing on the fault of Cottage Inn. You can still be our sponsor. Um, we we really just ate way too much. We ate way too much. Yeah. And just. And so after that, we like laid on the floor and told stories <laughs> instead of working. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike was a supervisor. I was a department head. Both of us were running on the uh, were both of us were like expected to keep people on track kind of jobs. Yeah, we were actively not doing our jobs. No, not at all. You couldn't. You couldn't in that situation. Right. Well, all overnights have that little bit of like goof around. Oh, oh, totally. That's how we invented. Uh, that's where Royd Mac came from. <laughs> Royd Mac. Royd Mac is a classic. How did that start? I don't even remember. I think it was a different overnight. I don't. It think- was a different overnight. It was not the same set. Um, but I don't remember where it came from. Oh, you know what it was? It was just the thing of me like, okay, so I, I really enjoyed when customers were not in the store during overnights or before like a store opened, like I would absolutely take advantage of that. I'd throw boxes around. I'd throw shit on, uh, against the ground. I, I would yell. Right. And if I got upset, I would yell something along the lines of this is fucking bullshit. Yep, that that's that's pretty much Royd Max catchphrase. So that's where it came from. I said something like that, and you were like, "Wow, in, on the steroids, Mac, a little bit of Royd rage," and that's where Royd Mac came from. Yep. Oh gosh, do you do you remember the night that that we took, um, we took that that s'mores kit that, that, <laughs> that busted open? It so, wasn't even just, oh, oh, no, no, you're right. It started there. It started there. It started there. So we used to sell, sell a s'mores making kit that you could take. No one bought them. No, no. Um, you could take like camping with you and it came with. Ironic that this came, came back to camping. I, I know. It's kind of how it works. Um, it came with, you know, your graham crackers, your marshmallow, your chocolate. And then it would come with these long wooden sticks for, you know, roasting marshmallows over, over a campfire. Well, they came in these cheap plastic tubes that were just like taped together with like a single piece of tape. Oh yeah. They would bust open all the time, all the time. And like the ones in this particular story were like on the outside of a pallet. And like, if you haven't worked retail, the outside of a pallet is super dangerous. Shit gets broken all the time there. Yeah. Yep. You got to be in the middle dog. Absolutely. So, you know, this kid's busted open. So we're just, you know, we grab, we gra- grab a couple of these, these wooden sticks and, you know, we started screwing around with them. I'm sure we did, like, some sort of sword fight at some point. Overnights kind of have the same energy as a sleepover, where you're just like, there's no real rules here. 
we're, we're stupid and then the stupid builds off of it itself. I think part of it has to do with the time of day. Certainly. Like, certainly. Like, um, it's dark outside. It's late at night. What logical what, reason is out the window? What, what's the, the quote from how I met your mother? Nothing good happens after, after 3 a.m. Uh, or 2 a.m. Maybe it was 3 a.m. One of those things. Two, it's either two or three, but same kind of concept. When it gets that late, you start doing really dumb stuff. And if your friend is doing dumb stuff, you start to do some dumb, dumb stuff and then the dumb builds. Right. Especially if there's no one to supervise you. <laughs> Even though we were the supervisors. <laughs> Co- <laughs> correct. So we take these, we take these wooden, these wooden dowels, I guess. And, um, the one end was a little bit pointed so you could, you know, skewer your, your marshmallow. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. We just thought it was a great idea to just start <laughs> stabbing the palate, just stab the palate with these skewers that were probably, I don't know what, like they're like two feet long. Yeah. Like two, three feet long. Yeah. And surprisingly they go fairly deep into a cardboard box. Oh yeah. They went straight through it. Yep. As we then destroyed a couple of other things in the process, but I remember there was two things in particular that we stabbed. There was like a, a charcuterie tray. Yeah. I was going to say there was some type of meat involved. Yeah. Cause the meat got, the meat got on my stick, Mike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the meat from the, the shark coochie. Part, oh gosh um and then like a like a bag of cookies i think did we like throw the bag of cookies in the air and like try to stab it out of the air too I'm pretty sure after it already been stabbed or maybe oh, it was a fresh bag almost positive i really hope no company ever hears this that i'm applying for because i'm obviously a loss prevention nightmare yeah it's fine the current company i'm waiting i work for that i will not name i don't do that because i know that you're much more serious about that kind of thing this place was not yeah yeah Cur- current job i do not i do not participate in that sort of activity anymore not at all but fuck we really got into that shit at roll market we crushed chairs in the baler <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I will i will preface that by saying these were damaged chairs that, okay they weren't like fully that, functional chairs but it needed- still was like a safety hazard Oh yeah. Yeah. They definitely needed to be thrown away, but we definitely put them in, in the baler that's only intended for cardboard and they would splinter like crazy. Yeah. Yep. You remember that time I put Marco's water bottle in the, the baler? That's right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then took it out cause it didn't actually break. No, you put it back in the fridge for him. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I wanted to keep it cold. <laughs> he kept using it for a bit after that. Didn't he? I'm pretty sure he did. <laughs> oh my God. You guys. Like, who did this to my water bottle? It's like really mean, guys. It's like really, really mean. Our uh, our old coworker Marco had a very distinct way of speaking. Yeah, pretty much sounds like that. Yep. Oh, that kid. Kind of sounded like he was high and falling asleep at the same time all the time. And just also really dumb. Oh, well, yeah. Which, I mean, kind of goes along with the high thing, but he was also unintelligent. Very much so. Oh, Marco. God, we have... S- so many fucking stories from World Market. Yeah. Just had a great time. Yeah. I mean, I guess I get a lot of weird stories just from places that I worked. I have so many stories from camp too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Work story. You always end up with a, with a good work story. Totally. I mean, you know, it, that, that kind of goes along with like what I was saying earlier about like adversity is less problematic. If you think of it as like, this is going to be a story at some point. Yeah. Like even shitty things that happen at work or even just weird things that happen at work. You can really embrace it. If you think of it as I can't wait to tell somebody about this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even looking back just, um, just at the stories that we just told, like in hindsight, that that was a horrible idea to just start stabbing things. (laughs) Um, but I I'm, I'm glad we did. Now we have that story. Oh, that was, that was fucking great. I, I, I always, I was always the guy who volunteered for overnights cause I hated working during the day. And I, I super, super don't regret that. I had so many good times on overnights. I like every overnight I did there. I had some kind of memory from it. I remember one of my favorite times was when we, when they decided to do like the holiday shop set as overnights and I got to lead that. Yeah. And, um, uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to save the story you're thinking of. I'll, oh, I'll save okay. that for another day. Okay. It's like, we have so many good stories in this already. Yeah, th- you're right. But I'm actually talking about the following year. Not the, that, not the year you're thinking of okay. the following year. Um, and I just had a great time. Like I, 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 I remember specifically 
I had just started listening to the Sonic R soundtrack. Okay. Um, Sonic R is a, a, a Sonic racing game that came out, like, I think it was the Genesis of the Dreamcast. And it sucks. But it has, like, the most incredible soundtrack ever. <laughs> Like you, the mu- you touched on this in a video of yours, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my on my video game music video, I covered a couple of the songs from the game. Right. Um. So I had just recently gotten into that soundtrack. So I just remember like building fixtures for the holiday shop set and listening to that soundtrack over and over. It was like it was my soundtrack for those overnights, and it was awesome. So I look on I look back on that super fondly. Very cool. And even now, like when I think about it, like my current job, like I don't have the best job. I don't, I I think my job really works for the kind of person that I am. I work mostly by myself. I don't see customers. I'm very organized. Like it's kind of the perfect job for me in a number of ways. But one way that it isn't is that I spend a lot of time inside of freezers and coolers and I hate being cold. Yeah, that's, that's not a great feeling. So that part of my job I hate, obviously. But if I... You know, if I didn't work that job for like a year, say, you know, in two weeks when this podcast is obviously at 10 million subscribers and we can quit our jobs. Right. Um, I'll look back on those times doing that job fondly because, you know, I got to like move boxes and just listen to music and or learn about space and have a good time. Even if I was freezing cold, that's not the part I'm going to be thinking about. Right. Yeah. See, I, I, I agree. I, I definitely don't like to be super cold. But I think I would take super cold over super hot personally. I, I, I am in the minority where we live because in Michigan, there are so many people who enjoy winter or who enjoy fall and who like everybody says the same shit. They'd rather be super cold than super hot. And the, def- the defense is always the same. When you're hot, there's only a certain amount of naked you can get. Very true. But when you're, when you're cold, you can keep layering. That's, that's where I was going to go with it. But that's exactly what I hate about it. Because I hate being wrapped up in layers. Because I hate having my movement restricted. I hate being just like the fucking kid in home. Uh, no, a Christmas story. Ralphie. <laughs> right. When, when he can't move because he's so bundled up. I fucking hate that. It's the worst. I, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you brought up. It's, um, I can't think of the kid's name, but it, it's actually Ralphie. It's Ralphie's little brother. You're right. It's Ralphie's little brother, and he's got that like the that, red, the red jump or uh, jumper, whatever. Yeah, the snowsuit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, y- do you remember how um our old coworker and friend Crystal used to come in basically dressed like that <laughs> every shift in the winter? I don't. She is so so anti cold. Well, that, I I can imagine because she lives in Florida now. Well, she yeah, now she lives in Florida. But yeah, she'd come in with like her winter coat and like mittens and a hat and like a scarf wrapped like completely around her face. <laughs> I, so I, you could like I, only see eyes. I resonate with that. I can get with that. Like I fucking hate the cold. Like my problem with the cold versus the heat is yes, there is only a certain amount that you can cool off. But for me, heat is only an uncomfortability. Cold hurts. Cold does hurt. If, if you get cold enough, like your skin hurts, you can't breathe right, like no, everything's uncomfortable. It's just terrible. I can't stand being cold. Even, even when it gets into like the, the, the over 100 degrees, it still never gets past a point of uncomfortability. It never hurts to be in the, in the, in the, in, in, out in the heat. See, now I run hot. So for, for me, honestly, anything really over like 80 is almost unbearable for me. I'll take I'll take 35 over 80 any day. I can't fucking do it. I I I have hated the cold ever since I was a kid. I uh, uh, and this is backed up by my mom. When I moved to New Hampshire, like I I I was born in Texas, mm-hmm. moved to New Hampshire when I was two years old. So this is too far back for me to remember. She says even then I hated the cold and I and I wanted to move back to Texas. Well, yeah, I, honestly, I I kind of feel like I'm in the minority. I feel like a lot of people like the heat. That I I don't know I. I most people that I talk to here are of the opinion that they'd rather be overly cold than overly hot. And I completely disagree. Hmm. Now I will say the, the difference is at least when it's, at least when it's cold outside as adults, we generally don't spend a ton of time outside in the cold. 
Yeah, so you can kind of minimize your exposure, but summer is full of all sorts of outdoor activities. And if it's like 100 degrees and you've got to have like a Okay, like well, a that's definitely going to depend on like the kind of person you are. Because if you're a sports guy, yeah, the summer is probably fucking unbearable. But for me as a, as a gamer, it's summer and winter the same in terms of how much I spend outside time, how much time I spend outside. I don't really go for walks. I spend, I stay, I sit inside. The most I'll do with the outside is sit in my sunroom and read a book. All right. You know, I'm a fucking lazy piece of shit. I eat like garbage. I do not move from my, my, my home very much. And for some reason I still weigh less than 130 pounds. Yeah. I don't know how you do that, bro. I, my body's a temple and, and you're six feet tall. I'm six feet tall. Yeah. Eventually my metabolism will slow down. And my thought process at this point in life is just, I got to use it while I've got it. The other day I ate a slice of pizza and a slice of cake for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, but that's to say if say like this podcast or my videos or live streaming ever blew up and I was finally able to do those as a job, which has been my dream for years, I, I wouldn't hate winter as much because I've been saying for years, like if I didn't have to go outside in the cold, I'd enjoy winter. Cause like I'm looking outside right now, like the snow, the way it's piled up right now, it's pretty, it's nice to look oh, it, at. Oh, snow looks beautiful. But as soon as you're out in it, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. So if you told me that I could make my living doing Twitch, doing YouTube, and I could like get my groceries delivered and I never had to go outside during the winter, I'd love it. I'd be fine with it. Cause you know, winter can be super cozy too. Like there's nothing there's it's so there's, there's, there's like the greatest comfortability in life is like on a snow day or, or, or which where I'm going to, I'm going to circle it back. Cause I'm a brilliant man like that. Right. Cause you, the last episode, cause you put a spoon underneath your pillow. Cause I put a spoon underneath my pillow. It's a snow day. Uh, laying on my couch, bundled up in blankets, drinking hot cocoa. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's like the, the peak of comfortability. Yeah. Comfortability. The, the only thing you're missing is like a fireplace. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, no, that is. So if that's all that winter was, I'd love winter too. The reality, however, is I occasionally have to go outside and drive in it. And I don't fucking want to do that. Yeah. And like my heat, ha- my car has heat now, but for the first five minutes, I'm still fucking cold. Now, what's your what's your opinion of of spring versus fall? I definitely prefer spring. Okay, I love spring, especially because it rains a ton. You know me. I fucking love the rain. I wish it rained every single day. If it rained every single day, I would be a very happy person. I will say I do. I do love to watch a good storm. It's it's the best. I like being out in it. You know, I like when there's a nice warm rain and it's just like it's the fucking best. But fall is pretty great, too. I do like the fall. Um, I think it gets to, like, the perfect amount of cold where, you know, you can be dressed up in, like, stylish clothes or whatever. Right. And still not be so cold that you're like, I can't wait to get inside. And there's, like, a certain, like, chill to the air that is specific to fall that's, like, every time it comes around, you're just instantly rushed back to, like, Halloween when you're a kid. Like picking out a pumpkin to do jack-o'-lanterns or whatever. I gotcha. So I do like that aspect of fall. What I don't like is that we live in Michigan where winter starts in November. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. Um, if fall were, it's, if the problem with Michigan is that winter starts in November and ends in May. If, if winter were stuck to its fucking three months it's supposed to stay at, I'd be much more okay with it. I gotcha. But no. No. It start, and then it eats into my fucking spring. Like it'll start raining in April and May. I love that, but it'll still be like 35 degrees in the morning. And I, I'm not a fan. Yeah. Yeah. C- yeah. Cause you'll have like a rainy. You're like, Oh, well that's all going to freeze tonight. Yeah. Sucks. Um, I do like the rain. Um, I like sleeping when it's raining. Oh, that- it's the best. Oh God. Like a rain nap. Oh, or a thunderstorm sleep. Fuck yeah, dude. So good. So good. I like that. I do like um like watching a storm, especially if you can um if you have like a garage where you can just mm. like leave the door open. Oh man, hell yeah. Cuz it, it's like it's almost like you're outside, but you're not. That's the best. Cuz you're not getting wet. That's great. Um or I mean, I'm sure I did it during a thunderstorm as a kid cuz I was stupid, but going swimming in the rain. I, 
It, I always like that. I always like that too. It it doesn't seem like it should be a thing because it's just you're in a body of water and more water is landing on you. There's something great about there it. There is something fantastic about it. There's there's like a there's like a rule in the Boy Scouts that like if you hear thunder, you can't go back in the water for half an hour. So whenever it would start to rain, we would just like get out there in the pool for as long as we could and hope that didn't start to thunder. But then there was like during staff week, I mean you you Staff week was kind of like us doing overnights. Like certainly we were still expected to follow the rules, but that didn't mean we did. Right. So we absolutely went swimming on some th- uh, thunderstorm nights. Yeah. Um, but aside from those instances, I am not a fan of rain. I, I fucking love the rain. Well, and the reason I don't is because especially, especially rain in the spring in the summer, it's okay. But in the spring, it like everything just gets like muddy and gross. Well, okay. So and there's no leaves on the trees. It's all brown and gloomy. There is that aspect of it. If it, it, you know, to counterpoint myself, if it did rain every single day, mm-hmm. it'd be pretty goddamn gross outside. Yeah. Because if it rains consistently for several days in a row, it gets pretty gross. Yeah. Mud starts flowing. The streets get covered in it. Yeah. The sidewalks get covered in it. I get that. I still would prefer to have that over a pristine day, to be honest. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like a goddamn vampire sometimes. I swear. Like, I don't, I don't really like sunny, clear days. I, I don't like it when it's super bright outside. I keep most of my, the blinds in my house strong because I'm not a big fan of natural light. I don't know why I'm like this, but I am. Speaking of vampires, uh, shout out to Tim. <laughs> yeah, Tim. I hope you listen to this episode, too. You got to support us, man. Yeah. But that being said about all the rain and the nastiness that can come with spring, I, I myself am a fall person. Yeah. Because I think temperature wise, you're still somewhat in that same range, but fall, you have like that little warmer. Yeah. At least, at least here in Michigan, it seems like summer will linger like a tiny bit, but like winter to spring to summer, I feel like you go from like 30 degrees to 85 degrees almost overnight. Well, that's the problem with Michigan. Spring only lasts like two weeks. Yeah. Because winter sneaks so far into it. Yeah. Um, but that that's why I like fall. It it seems like it lasts a little longer. The weather's nice. You can still you don't necessarily need, need to wear a jacket, but you can go out. Um, there's still leaves on the trees throughout like September and yeah, part of October. So I do like fall. Everything's I, it, still green. It's not it gets really pretty, especially when things do start to change colors. They do. That still only lasts like two weeks, obviously, as well. Cause yeah. then, you know, everything falls out, but no fall is nice. If, if the only reason I don't like fall is that it's a reminder that winter's coming. <laughs> I, I do really enjoy it because again, I, I tend to run, run warmer than most. I do really, really enjoy those like 65 degree fall days when everything is still green and it still looks like summer and the sun's still out, but it's not just baking hot. I mean, definitely like as a big Halloween fan, Halloween is my favorite holiday. So like that alone, like I fucking love the Halloween vibe. Like when people start putting decorations up, you start seeing it in the stores, the houses decorated. Oh, I fucking love Halloween. And like, (laughs) I'm basically a Halloween person. Like every year that Halloween passes, I collect more decorations and none of them ever come down. Like as we're sitting here right now, I have a skull hanging up on my bookshelf and I have fucking skeleton boy sitting in my kitchen yeah and i have it like a, a neon skull sign on my wall like all that's halloween decorations that i never took down and huh. i don't plan to well i know oh and my skeleton stuck to my window it's been there for like two years oh you know i've never even noticed that yeah it's um, been there a while i know i know your little your little skeleton boy in the kitchen and the the head that you've got floating around somewhere yeah i've seen those but i i never i never actually paid any attention to the uh your little window window cling. Yeah, for everyone, it's it's like those like I guess gel like sticky gel things that you put on a window or a mirror that you're supposed to take off eventually. And I just never did. He's just been sitting there. He's my friend. It's fun when you like close the blinds and the sun will create a shadow that looks like him on the Oh, blinds. that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um speaking of skeleton skeleton Halloween decorations, um as a kid we had this like you know, you know, we would decorate the house because, you know. Oh, did you? Sorry, I didn't. I was a kid. Did you Go notice ahead. my full size skeleton? I, I didn't. I didn't notice it today. Um, when we filmed the last podcast, 
uh, or episode one. I, I noticed that you had it then. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it had always been there. No, he's, he's new. I got him on clearance. He was only 20 bucks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I've always wanted one of these. I'm going to pick them up. I have a full-size skeleton as a Halloween decoration, and I set him up to be standing and kind of waving at the door, so when you walk in, it looks like he's saying hello. Yeah. Yeah. Today, I just, I already knew it was there, so I just didn't pay attention to it. But, yeah. Um, but anyway, back to your skeleton. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I was a kid. Um, you know, my parents would decorate the house with decorations and all that good stuff, skeletons and witches and bats and things like that. Nice. And we had this one, this one decoration. It was, um, it was a wooden, not wooden. It was a, just like a, like a paper cardboard, I guess a cardboard, uh, a skeleton that we would hang up on, on one of the random doors. And, um, the joints of the skeleton, um, were little like fasteners. So his little arms and legs could move freely. Okay. If you touched him, um, and the dog that we had growing up <laughs> was terrified of that thing. Oh, <laughs> it was just like a flat, like cardboard skeleton flush with whatever surface you put him on. <laughs> that dog did not like that. Oh, that's w- awesome. Would like, like side eye it and like, <laughs> like, like creep by it. Oh man. And it, it never failed. It was every single year. Never got used to it. Never got used to it. That's awesome. Yeah. A little Skeletor there. You got to do a lot of nostalgia this episode. I it, guess I, I kind of feel like we've covered a lot of nostalgia stuff just in general. We have. It, you know, it's, it's always easy whenever you have any kind of topic. It's always amazing. To recall something from your past. It's always amazing when I think about it. Cause like I, when I, when I actively think about like what memories do I have, it feels like I can never come up with anything. But then when we start talking about this stuff, like memories start to surface that I hadn't thought of in a long time. Right. And they're always like super interesting to talk about. Oh, it's probably been at least 10 or 15 years since I've thought about that skeleton that scared the dog. Yeah. And like when we were talking about the attic in my room, I think last episode, um, like I hadn't thought about that in a long time, but I was thinking about stories for the podcast and I remembered that. And I was like, I completely forgot that there was a door in my bedroom with just secret secrets buried away that my parents wouldn't let me touch. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, anytime you can't, have access to something it's that, fucking treasure obviously yeah, yeah that's all you want to do with that that's point. my parents riches that's how they bought bought the house right obviously right whatever whatever is in that that little attic room gold it's gold jerry gold mm. I, I don't know it's not seinfeld so oh yeah that's true you you really got to get into it it, it that, i mean that that could be a whole topic but it it is just such a fantastic show. Maybe one day. And it's still pretty relevant, I feel. There are some dated jokes, but um, not to get too into Seinfeld, but the fact that it was the show about nothing and it didn't really have a continuing plot. It kind of shaped what television is now. Yeah. I mean, if you look at that, that's kind of the basis for, you know, like the Simpsons and Family Guy. Like they don't really have much of a reoccurring plot from episode to episode. No. Nope. You just come up with, you know, a unique topic for that episode. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, the fans didn't like this plot twist we had. I do think like with the advent of streaming services, the plot driven show has seen a huge resurgence, like shows like Breaking Bad that were hugely popular. But there's still a lot of that in TV today where there's just like no actual purpose to it. I'm personally a big fan of kind of the fusion show. Um, like Rick and Morty. Uh, I know it's a meme. I know people are going to make fun of me for being a Rick and Morty fan, but fuck the memes. I don't care. It's a funny show. That show has a very loose plot from episode to episode. Okay. Where like every now and then they will advance the plot, but then there's also episodes that have nothing to do with the main plot. Right. Rick and I kind of like that kind of thing. Cause like, you know, there's enough of a plot that things change but the plot is so unimportant that you don't need to know it to like just watch an random episode. Yeah. Yeah. Memes are great though. Memes are great. And with that, goodbye.